Hello again, friends. Ed Harold here with you, your fearless leader. Welcome to another Life with Breath expert series. Today we have the amazing Kathleen Nagy with us, and she is affectionately known as the Sound Lady. And we're going to learn all sorts of different ways that we can use humming to improve our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual awareness of what's going on in life today and really raising the frequency and vibration of the healing qualities that is already in stored in the human body. So Kathleen, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Well, it's great to be with you, beautiful. Today, let's just get started with a little meditation, if we could. So in your own way, let your eyes close. Let go of any external distractions. Become aware of your breath. And begin to take control of your breath. Maybe you want to slow it down a little bit. Maybe you're happy with the pace you have right now. Or maybe you want to breathe a little faster. And as you begin to deepen your breath, straighten your spine and open your mind. Allow every cell in your body to be like a beautiful ear. Allow every cell in your body to have a wonderful voice. If you're familiar with the ocean sounding breath from the yoga schools, allow a soft neutral tone to form in the throat and allow that neutral audible sound to introvert your sense perception. And what does it feel like to focus your mind's attention on the sound you're picking up at the top of your trachea? Notice on the inhale, you might sense an expansion of your inner voice. Notice on the exhale, you might sense a recoil of the inner voice back to silence. You might notice that not only are you controlling your breathing, but there's another layer where we are being breathed. And as if your breath and your mind were like a microscope, begin to go deeper into your throat the inner workings of the physiology, the psychology of the throat. It's a very complex area, so go slowly. And wherever your mind intuitively goes, go there with curiosity. And for the last minute or so, maybe breathing a little bit slower. Controlling the sound in your throat, the audible level of is it, is it too high? Is it too low? Or is it spot on to hold you in the present moment? And then begin to let go of words. Begin to let go of vowel sounds consonant sounds.
bringing yourself into a space of neutrality. And then for the last few breaths, simply noticing the throat is the amazing operator between the senses of the heart and the neural systems of the brain. It's this massive switchboard where we consciously control that voice we hear in the head, the voice we hear in the heart. And know that you are not that voice in your head. You are not that voice in your heart. You are the person listening to those voices. And that comes with responsibility. When you're ready to leave the meditation, you can deepen your breath. You can let out any sounds or sighs or yawns or moans or groans, whatever feels great for you. You can let your eyes open and reconnect with the environment that you're in. Ah, oh, yeah. So we have a lady who's going to teach us a lot today about sounds, primordial sounds, sounds such a big part of our life and our auditory skill sets. Well, Kathleen, thanks for joining us today. It's my pleasure, Ed. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in this amazing craft. Well, I'm a retired, classically trained orchestral musician. Mm. <clears throat> Played the French horn has always been my my love and my passion and I just wanted to be the best musician I could be so I went to school and got my degrees and uh, played in symphony orchestras and I taught music and I conducted orchestras and I conducted musical theater and you know did all and it was just so much fun I, I, I used to have to just kind of pinch myself and say that they're paying me for this this is wild <laughs> that's great um, <clears throat> but I got to a point and I think it was the 1812 overture that did it to me. Um, as a French horn player in Massachusetts, we play the 1812 overture several times a year in orchestras. So, you know, we play it on the 4th of July mm -hmm. and we play it at a Christmas pops concert or, or at an Easter, you know, concert. It, it, it's played a lot. And I started to notice that some of the old guys in the violin section were just kind of phoning it in, mm -hmm. you know, they've mm -hmm. played it a hundred times. And I thought to myself, I don't ever want to get to that point. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't ever want to get, and I just didn't honestly have one more da 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 in me, you know, that mm -hmm. I, I had reached my, my quota. Ah, ah. <laughs> I, I thought um, <clears throat> that there was more to music than just entertaining people. Right. I, mm. I, I wanted to do more than just entertain. It seemed like I had this huge, enormous understanding of sound and the power of sound. And I had to take all of that love and passion. I had to focus that into the French horn and I had to play the notes perfectly in tune and perfectly in rhythm and perfectly in balance and perfect, perfect, perfect all the time. And there was, I felt after a while I was missing the forest for the trees. Right that there was so much more to the power of sound. And so I moved out of music for entertainment into sound for healing. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that now for oh, 25 years or so. Uh, and I, I've just, I play with sound. I play with my voice. I, um, I live with my ears. Mm. Um, visually, I'm not real good. Visually, you know, I use my eyes to keep from bumping into things, you know, for the most part, but I uh, looking at something in detail is really work for me. Mm -hmm. 
And so imagining visual things was also a lot of work for me. And whenever I got into a meditation situation, let's say we're I'm meditating on my chakras and there's this guided meditation that says, imagine this wheel, imagine this color. And I always got this big blank black screen. Mm -hmm. But if I meditated with a sound, I could really focus mm -hmm. because my ears were engaged. So for me, uh, I had to kind of move meditating from that imaginary guided meditation phase to making sounds and then following the sounds and the harmonics into the ethers wherever they would take me. And I was OK with that. Right, right. Uh, but so because we're all wired differently. Right, Ed? I mean, some of us are wired for sight and, mm -hmm. and thought, hardwired at birth, and some of us are hardwired for sound hearing mm -hmm. touch you know we're the touchy feely people <laughs> the sound people we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so i started to approach music and sound from the perspective of how can this heal me how can i use this sound that i can make with my voice to heal my body and to make me more aware of my divinity so if the breath is the motor and the throat is kind of we have the ability to be the steering wheel the, the throat becomes almost an instrument on its own sure sure i mean the the throat the sound of the voice mm -hmm. is actually biofeedback information to the brain about the right. health of the body right mm -hmm. the state of our health is actually in the sound of our voice and the brain is listening all day long to the sound of our voice, whether we're aware of it or not. Right. So why not take that system that already exists and use it consciously? Right. I love that. I love that. And, you know, when I think about my limited knowledge of the throat, I mean, there's the larynx, there's the pharynx, there's the vocal cords, there's the esophagus, the trachea, there's the vagus nerve. There's, there's a lot of piping and wiring. It's very sensitive. Uh, that's going on uh, in the throat and the neck. Can you explain a little bit about how how we make these sounds or how they're how they resonate uh, from the throat area? We make the sounds with the breath, right? <laughs> the breath carries the sound, and you so you you add the sound to the breath. And then you put an intention on it. And now you've got an unconscious system breathing in and out that has really been ratcheted up, you know, to a very effective system if, if you know how to work it consciously. So we, we make the sounds, you know, by taking a deep breath mm -hmm. and and letting the sound carry our intentions, our our voice, our speaking our truth. The, the throat chakra is in there too, you know, the thyroid, the metabolism. There's just, there's so much that the sound of the voice uh, affects. And what I've learned is that we all have our own musical key. Our bodies all have a musical key that is tuned to the sound of our voices, to the vocal range of our voice, so that we can, we're made so that we can use our voice to help heal our body. It's right. just something that we should all have been taught in second grade. <laughs> but I love but, that. <laughs> but never were. Uh, so there's, so there's, what I do there's, is I teach people how to find the sounds that resonate with their body and how to use their voice to move energy through their body consciously to bring circulation and oxygenation. You know, we see so many people that are what I would call blocked in the throat area. Their, their, their voice is blocked. There may be other issues behind the sense of that blockage that maybe their voice isn't valuable in the world. Or, you know, maybe I feel shame about things I've said 20 years ago or things that were said to me that had taken my breath away. Does, all, does the trauma in life have any 
bearing on how we use our voice out in the world and in our inner world? Oh, sure. Uh, when, when there's when there's trauma in the part of a body, it doesn't resonate uh, harmoniously with the rest of the system. Uh, and when that when that trauma is unconscious, you know that adds another whole layer of well, how do you fix something that's unconscious and you don't even know you have it? Um, sound and the breath can bring it to consciousness. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in a way that sometimes you don't even have to remember if, if it's some kind of a trauma that we experienced um, or, or just a, a, an emotion that was just too big for us to process at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, either we didn't have the understanding of how to do it. We didn't have the support system to help us do it. We didn't have the time to do it. So we just stuff it. We all do it. It's how we function. It's And, and then we forget about it. Like, and if we don't talk about it, it'll go away. But the fact of the matter is, uh, energy can't be deleted. Energy can't be destroyed. Right. And so if uh, that energy is going to go somewhere in the body, the brain is going to take the frequency of whatever that feeling is, and it's going to put it somewhere in the body that kind of resonates with the same frequency because the brain doesn't know what else to do with it. But then once you learn your notes of, of your, your body, you know, with my system of lear- learning your body's musical scale, you can start to very softly, very gently hum the note. It starts to bring life, you know, back to that part of your body. I mean, some people have this very real monot- monotone voice. They just speak on the same on the same note all the time. They don't really go very far up or down. Everything's just mm-hmm. kind of all here. And, the, and what, that, what that says is... Um, your self-expression is extremely limited. <laughs> right, right. Because what I've found is when you have a, a full spectrum voice that has all the notes of the scale represented, that has all the octaves, you know, that your voice can, can reach, you're a very interesting speaker and people like listening to you. And almost instinctively, they know they can trust you. Mm-hmm. It's not something logical, but it's the sound of your voice they can instantly tell someone so much about you on an unconscious level. Right. Right. I'm, right. I'm, I'm sure you've experienced that. This is just fascinating. What a rabbit hole this is. You know, I don't hear a lot of people speaking about these types of techniques today. You know, it's, you know, go out and do your yoga or go to the gym and exercise or go run triathlons and you'll feel good for a little while. It sounds like this is a lifelong tool of uh, personal growth and rebalancing and rebooting ourselves continuously. That's always available to us. Yes. It's how we were made. It's the gift we were given. Some of the greatest experiences I've had in my life has been in the Sanskrit chanting. And there was, it's a mantra type call and response type chanting. And it's, it's very challenging from a cardiovascular standpoint because as it builds and builds and builds, it, there's a lot of resistance, whether it be emotional or psychological, to, to hang with your particular role uh, in the response. And, uh, you know, the, re, the, re, the repetition of the syllables and the strength that it takes to, to stay with it and you reach that crescendo and then it gradually comes back down. These were some of the, I can't think of a, a healthier word, but I mean, it was like some of the highest experiences I've ever had with myself, like really feeling complete as a man. And who would ever have thought that the repetition of, of breath and, and, and mantra together would have such a cleansing effect on the nervous system and such a connector to the fearless part of myself and my heart. Oh, how wonderful. Well said. Uh, no, well said. It's, it's true. Uh, they're non-deniable. I don't know why I don't do it more. It's almost like I uh, resist what I need the most. Well, it's, it's, it's never pleasant to find ourselves in those situations where we're transitioning from unconscious to conscious. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And then also I've had experiences with vowel sounds, just simple toning Mm -hmm. of different notes and 
I mean, is there different frequencies and vibrations to these that resonate in different areas of the body? Exactly. Uh, we, we can try it just now, just a couple of different vowel sounds. Um, because one of the things that I, I teach people how to do is how to use the voice to set, send the sound into the body and the bones of our body conduct the sound, you know, throughout the body. So, um, well, well, two things. As you talked about m mantras first and, mm -hmm. and that type of chanting. And, and even if you don't understand the words you're saying, right? Right. Right. It's in a different language, but those words have been chanted for thousands of years and the energy that has grown up around them, you can access by entraining with it, by sounding, you know, with it. And so you can get the benefit of those thousands of years of energy put into those words. And it can be a, a really profound experience. Um, what I do to kind of take that to a, a, a different level is if you know your body's musical key and you, you can write your own little phrase um i deserve to be here so mm -hmm. you know so whatever the the unconscious yeah. fear is it, well it's kind of subconscious you kind of know it's there but you don't pay much attention to it but when let, let's say i deserve has to do with a solar plexus you know chakra mm -hmm. area so What's the note of your solar plexus? Let's write a little mantra song with your words in the key of your solar plexus. Interesting. So you're talking to your body and to your consciousness with your voice. Uh, and it's resonating in the area where the disharmony is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you, you really can shift that... Uh, I, I don't deserve into I do deserve mm -hmm. by simply breathing it, intending it, sounding it. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I create these little mantra songs. I put them on an MP3 player. I play them while I'm doing the dishes. Right. I mean, right. You know, to just repeat it over and over and over because the, the mantra is like the groove on the record, right? Mm -hmm. the, right. More you, the more you listen to it, the deeper the groove, the quicker your brain can access it. And so you can shift all kinds of old negative thought patterns, you know, with with mantras for, for sure. They psychiatrists use it to help people with addictions. I mean, what I find when you know your body's musical scale, you can you can deal with PTSD and insomnia. Your body just instantly relaxes. It's like, mom, they're playing my song. <laughs> your, your body so loves it. That is so interesting. Especially the, the part where you were saying that you don't necessarily know what the words mean, but you have a visceral effect from the sounds. Like every time I go to the opera, I don't know what they're singing, but I always cry. I don't know why. I, I have no idea why that happens. I'm so deeply moved by the syllables and the human expression of these sounds. I find myself in tears all the time. And I'm looking around and nobody else is crying but me. I, I don't know what that's, but it just now it makes sense to me now that you don't need to know in your mind what these words mean. You just allow this in. Right, exactly. And you're very good at allowing it in, evidently. I mean, and feeling it. I mean, because other people can listen to it intellectually. I mean, if I were going to the opera and with all of my training, you know, I would be listening for, oh, she missed a note. Oh, she did not sing that properly. The clarinet player just played the wrong note. I mean, you can right. listen that way. <laughs> right, right, right. Or you can listen, like you was, you said in the opening meditation, every cell of your body turns into an ear. Listen, turn your heart into an ear and listen with your heart something you know how to do and that's why the sounds affect you the way they do it, it seems like the arts themselves aren't as honored as much as when i was a child 50 years ago 60 years ago how, how can we support the arts and what you're doing and because this is just such a big part of the human expression is is the arts and so many of the arts classes have been cut in the public schools. When, when the budget, that? when the budget, you know, gets tight, the the music program goes uh, first, 
And then usually some of the sports start to go after that. But, uh, and so we don't really teach music the way we used to teach it. And I saw a bumper sticker on a car not too long ago. It said, remember when there used to be melodies? <laughs> <laughs> I love a melody. I'm a sucker for a good melody, but now it's all about rhythm. It's all about rhythm and saying words, you know, really fast and not, there's not necessarily a melody, it's spoken. Right. Uh, so, and, and it's great that young people have been able to find expression, you know, through that mode. Uh, we didn't teach them how to put it into a melody and they figured out how to put it into a rhythm. Okay, they, they're expressing themselves, but I'm with you, I miss the melodies. <laughs> So if someone, if someone wanted to work with the sound lady and I came in and I said, I want what you're offering, what would be some of the first steps that, that you would introduce to me so that I could feel as good as you? Well, we would, we would figure out your body's musical scale. Interesting. Uh, because that's, that's where it all starts. And, and that it's not that all that hard, Ed. Really, the, the range of our voice determines our, our musical scale. So the lowest note you can comfortably sing, and I don't mean a note, this is not a note that you can project loudly because it's at the mm -hmm. bottom part of our range, but it, it would be a note that you could sustain mm -hmm. uh, softly. And we need you find that lowest note that you can comfortably sing that doesn't strain your voice because it's not necessary to strain to heal, heal ourselves. It's mm -hmm. not, right, we, right. we just need to find, you know, the, the right notes. So it, it just a sigh from, I say to them, you know, let, let's, uh, let's have a nice sigh from a high note down to a low note. Mm -hmm. ah. mm -hmm. right. Beautiful. And I listen to where the voice ends, you know, and I go, and I find that note. Mm -hmm. And then I say, okay, hum this note. Would you like to play along? Would you like to try? Mm -hmm. Shall we find your root chakra note? Mm -hmm. okay. Interesting. So just uh, take a nice breath and ah, down to a low sound. That feels good. <laughs> I want you to do it. <laughs> so I start as high as I can go and I just drop down with a sigh. Yeah. Ah. I feel that go way down. That went way down there. Can you? And you hum that note way down there. Mm. Mm. Okay, that, that was the note that you started on. Mm, but I know you can go lower than that. I felt this shaking around my eyes, my temple, my frontal cortexes, my masseter. It was all vibrating. Good. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, that was the note E. So that tells me that's that's maybe your your uh, third eye chakra um, because you, you got had all the feeling, you know, in here, which tells me that your root chakra would be this. And I'm wondering if you can, can you sing that note? It's a little bit low for me, but I, here's an octave. I can't go that low. Sounds good to me. I can feel you coming through the screen. Now that was like a little lower, like in here, like in my heart area. All right, let me take it. That's great. Right. So I teach people how to find the sounds. And if you can't you do it with your voice, I help with my voice. We identify, you know, what your scale is. And then I have, I have these. Uh, they're called choir chimes. Great. It's this beautiful analog sound. Um, and what I do is I create MP3s where I chime your chakra scale. Five, five chimes on each chakra. And you have these MP3s to listen to that you can either just listen to your chakra scale and feel the energy 
moving up your body. Literally, you feel your chakras vibrate. You don't have to do anything. Uh, it, go ahead. It's interesting that the people who I know who sing, have cultivated happiness in their life. You know, like we're, we're hard driven for pleasure. Pleasure is part of being human. Happiness is not. I notice people who sing regularly seem to have cultivated an aura of happiness around them in that vibration of happiness. Is that, is, well, is that just my illusion or is that true? Our auric field all right, also responds to the sound of our voice. Um, there's different layers of our auric field, right? We've got, you know, uh, emotional, mental, astral, mm -hmm. right? We have all, all these different layers. Once you know your body's musical scale, the harmonics, I'm using a word people probably don't understand, um, the sort of brother and sister tones uh, mm -hmm. the, the physics of sound is how sound how sound expands. It sound expands in a very predictable way, and it's called the harmonic series of notes. So there's a way to know how one note, if sustained in a resonant environment, will expand, and the harmonics of that note correlate to the layers of our auric field. Interesting. So that. If you have something that's manifested in your physical body that started in the emotional mm -hmm. plane, well, you really can't fix it on the physical level. You've got to fix it on the emotional level, but it's unconscious. You didn't know it was there. How do you do that? When right. you start to hum your chakras, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it starts to release that old energy and then it, and it recalibrates. Uh, and humming is just something, you know, you, you spoke in the beginning about, you know, the shame around our voices. You know, you were told when you were in chorus, when you were in elementary school, you just mouth the words, you know, mm -hmm. because your voice is your voice is wrong. So instead of teaching the student how to do it, they tell you to just kind of be invisible and mouth the words. And then you have this feeling like my. No one wants to listen to the sound of my voice. No one wants to listen to me. Right. I'm not worth listening to. What an awful thing, right? You know, right. To, to do to someone. But humming doesn't carry all that stigma, because mm -hmm. no one ever performs a hum. Right, right, right. I've never listened to anyone perform a hum. That's so so humming so. doesn't have all of that guilt and shame around it. Humming is something we do for ourselves. We rarely hum for anyone else. Maybe an infant you know, in, in our arms. But humming is a self-soothing toning, a natural thing. We don't think to ourselves, sometimes when we get nervous, we'll find ourselves mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, kind of a nervous humming. We don't plan on doing that. Mm -hmm. The body is trying to soothe itself. So, you know, as, as a sort of a practical mystic, I like to take systems that already exist that are unconscious and use them consciously. People tell people have told report people have reported to me in the past that they'll be out in public with me and for no reason at all they'll they'll hear me humming, but I have no mental recollection of any humming at all. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of something as silly as that? Well, you you're unconsciously doing it. That you just not you're not aware of it, but yeah, you're humming. You're trying to soothe yourself. Um, That's interesting. Listen to yourself. Well, you know, if you don't soothe yourself, no one else will soothe you. So exactly, somebody's got to do it. <laughs> now, when when you're speaking, I heard you speaking earlier of the chakras and the chakra systems, and and there's different corresponding notes for, uh, I guess the seven basic chakras, or maybe even more. Yes. Very yes. interesting. And and not only the, I mean, once you uh, start working, well, these chakras are connected to glands. Right. right, they're etherically connected to the major glands of our of our system, and so glands are making hormones, turning systems on and off. Mm -hmm. uh, we can tell the brain to turn systems on and off with our voice when we know the note to sing, you know, to that gland. 
So you're uh, telling if you, it, let's say, let's say um, your throat chakra is the note F and your third eye chakra is the note G. All right. Well, but you got a problem with your sinuses and your sinuses live in between your throat chakra and your root. So what's the note in between F and G? The note F sharp is going to resonate this part of your body. Mm -hmm. F will do your throat. F sharp will do this. G will do your third eye. So there's a way, once you know your musical scale, to, to access all the parts of your body with the sound of your voice. And we can learn this all through you. The sound lady teaches that in this private sessions, classes. Yep. This is amazing that that we can rewire our nervous system with these sounds. We can affect our glands, which change or activate gene expression as we move through our lives. Yes. This isn't mainstream medicine, but maybe it should be. Well, uh, there are people, uh, there are a few, you know, physicians who are dabbling with it and have dabbled in, with it over the years. And it is now become sort of in some hospitals, depending on the uh, where you are in the country, in some hospitals, they use these alternative um, techniques. Uh, breathing is one. I mean, they will get, to, if pe someone's having an anxiety attack, what's the first thing you say to them? Breathe. Right. Take a deep breath. Breathe. Breathe down to your toes. You know, someone who's having an anxiety attack, all of their energy is going up, up, up. We've got breathe, sigh down. <sighs> Bring your energy down. Bring your energy back into your body. Feel yourself. Be secure and safe again. But, you know, we live in this time where it almost seems like our head has been severed from the intelligence of the body. And, and when I do hum, I notice the first place I go is into my body and I become present, which means that I am proactive in how I'm in the moment. And this yes. proactivity is a lot about what I do and a lot about what you do. We turn on the natural healing qualities of the body to help the mind help us continue to grow as a, as a species. Yes. And there are also ascension chakras. That, I love uh, that. that, that that's another whole scale. <laughs> it's a, it's more, more notes, you know, added to it. But um, we, the brain is a, the language of the brain is frequency. Mm -hmm. Everything is, everything is frequency. Everything is vibration. And I say to people, they say, well, I don't believe in that stuff. I don't believe in that sound healing stuff. And I say, well, matter vibrates. You know, yeah, matter vibrates. Nobody's going to argue with me. I said, so sound is vibration. Well, duh. Yeah, nobody's going to argue with that either. Well, therefore, sound affects matter. Mm -hmm. You just need to have the right note for the right piece of matter. And that's where I come in. I help you find the notes that vibrate the pieces of matter in your body that you're interested in. So when you find these notes... It appears that the vibration of the note is much like throwing a rock out into a lake and it echoes out these little ripples that move through our cells. Yes. And it, it can it can affect you on the cellular level. Absolutely. Well, without a doubt, it, it and I guess as we master this or become more familiar or comfortable with learning this, it can really go down the rabbit hole. It's a nice rabbit hole, though. <laughs> it certainly is. It seems like we're scared of the rabbit hole sometimes. Oh. <laughs> well, um, the rabbit hole holds it can can hold you know, scary stuff, but with the right tools, there doesn't need to be any fear involved. Really, it just you you trust your voice, you trust your brain is listening to the frequencies. Uh, and you're making the sounds that your brain knows your body needs. And it's, it's a way of cleansing um, that can be um, sublime. Yes. You, you, can, you, can really, you can release a lot of stuff most of the time without even having to remember what that stuff is that you're releasing. Right. It's not important. 
what's important is the frequency and the harmony. You know, we see a lot of folks these days with low energy and start lots of gastrointestinal problems around elimination and proper assimilation of, of our diet. Can, can humming really bring our, 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 our gut brain back into balance? Well, some of the things that humming does is it, uh, because of the deep breathing and, mm -hmm. and it, it will lower your blood pressure and your heart rate. Good. Uh, Good. It activates your parasympathetic nervous yeah. system, which is the calmer downer heart. Right. Right. Uh, so if you're, if you're running for your life from a dinosaur, you know, mm -hmm. and your system has gone into fight or flight, and this whole biochemical cascade of, of things are happening that are sending more of the you know blood into your torso so that you can run faster and taking it out of your fingers. I mean, there's all the hormones start to, you know, trick because mm -hmm. you're in danger for your life. But then when you get away from the dinosaur and you start to calm down, the emotion of calming down tells your brain, okay, stop making all that adrenaline. We're going to make more adrenaline now mm -hmm. and we're going to calm down. So our emotions are what trigger our hormones. Mm -hmm. And so you can then balance the hormones by humming regular interval by, by humming the root chakra five times, humming the sacral chakra five times, humming the, the solar plexus five times. It's saying to the brain, pay equal attention to all of these parts of the body. And by the time you get up to the crown chakra, you are completely relaxed. Beautiful. When I was back in yoga school many, many decades ago, everybody began with the root chakra. They, they, the instructors and professors were, this is where we all begin. We all begin right back where we began in the womb, at, at the pelvic floor area. Is that a lot? Uh, is that something you do in your work, or you recommend? I do. I have worked with people, uh, like if they just want to work on something in their heart chakra, uh, we we can work on it, and it will get better for a little bit, but the issue will probably come back. I mean, right. the chakras, it's a system. It all, you know, everything works together. Uh, harmonically, the notes, I can tell you what chakras work with each other because of the harmonics of them, mm -hmm. right? So uh, lear learning those notes is, is the most important piece of it all. Now, when you were playing the French horn, were you aware that all this was going on inside of you and the French horn could actually uh, be an instrument for rebalancing also? I figured that out. Um, the French horn really is, I think, the best instrument in the world for sound healing. Yes. As the player, because, well, first of all, it's a beautiful sound. I haven't met anyone who doesn't like the sound of the French horn. But <laughs> as, a, as a musician playing the horn, you're blowing into the horn and the your air is going through it and you've got your hand in the bell of the horn. Mm -hmm. So it's you, you become this feedback loop. You're the transmitter and the receiver of the sound. Interesting. And yes, when you're playing the notes that are in the octave, you know, of your body, you can absolutely rock your system. <laughs> That's great. Now, when, when you're working with folks with the, with, with your humming techniques, is it, or do folks do it seated? Do they do it uh, supine on their back? Do they walk? Is, is there any particular way that you like to present the work to folks? Well, when we start, I, I, I ask them when we're, when we're looking for the root chakra note, um, it's easier if you're lying on your back, you know, because that your root chakra is a, very, is a very dense part of your body. And if you're sitting on it, you know, the chances of you feeling it vibrate for the first time are going to be slim to none mm -hmm. uh, unless you're very sensitive. So I say, you know, when we're starting out better to lay down on your back so that you can really um, feel the vibration when you when you get the right note. So, so that, I do, I start with the root chakra and we work our way up because it's just how we're connected to the earth affects everything else that we do. So if we that, kind of dismiss that as not being important, we're, uh, we'll never be grounded. And, and electricity needs positive, negative, and a ground, right? Right, right, right. right. 
you know, working with the root chakra like that, you must see major improvement in circul circulatory issues down to the feet and through the legs and the gait of how folks walk and, and their posture. It must really echo down first and then up. Would that make sense? Yeah, actually, I, and I had a woman who was in a wheelchair from a car accident and she had a lot of nerve damage in one of her legs and she couldn't walk. And when we were doing the root chakra, I, we really expected some changes to happen on the root chakra. Uh, but it didn't actually happen until she got to her throat chakra. The throat chakra is a perfect fifth above the root chakra, and it's very supportive. The throat chakra is very supportive of the root chakra. So once she kind of cleared out her, her root chakra and she started then humming the support note, her leg got warm, and she could feel she had sensations in her leg for the first time in two years. Um, it, we're humming. You know, and, and medical science tells you you can't fix damaged nerves. No, you can. Yes. <laughs> when you think about the anatomy of the body, I mean, just to keep it at a level that we can understand, that we can all talk about without getting too much in the weeds. I think there's a huge connection between the pelvic floor and the throat and how we express ourselves and how we receive expression. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and not, not only that, but if we take the, uh, the pattern of the perfect fifth and we, we, uh, which is just an interval between the, a perfect fifth is, uh, an interval is how much space in between the notes. So mm -hmm. do, re, mi, fa, sol, do, sol, that's a perfect fifth. And that, um, interval exists between not only the root chakra and the throat, but the sacral chakra and the third eye work together because there's another perfect fifth there between them. The solar plexus and the crown work together because of their harmonic con um, connections and correlations. So that that little expression of notes that you just did, that do, re, mi, fa, so, la, did that make you feel as good as it made me feel? Well, yes, because I sang it in my key. Now, we could be in a similar key. Um, no, it, was, it was so soothing. It was like a vibrational massage. Yeah, I, I call it the chakra sound spa experience. <laughs> yeah, that's that's very interesting because it brought me right into my heart and I felt complete at that moment. I felt uh, it felt good being me and I wasn't doing anything except other than receiving those uh, sounds through the computer screen. Yeah. Well, I've been working on my voice for many, many years, and it has the ability to project a, a very rich, you know, harmonic sound that uh, is bound to um, aff affect other people in a very positive way. So with that being said, in the, the COVID years, and we're not really together as much as we used to be, this, this works even online. You, you can do online session with folks? Yeah, we we just do Skype sessions. Oh, that's wonderful. Or, or, or Zoom sessions. That's wonderful. This is such a wonderful service for folks. It's much like I feel like uh, it's giving me the benefits of exercise, but I'm not doing any wear and tear movements uh, to my joints, muscles, or bones, which obviously my immune system then has to clean up after my exercise routine. I'm just getting the benefits. Yeah, it's, it's a sonic... Uh... A sonic experience. Uh, That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Now, when folks or when folks watch this and they want to do work with you, how, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Well, Ed, thanks for asking. My, my website is thesoundlady.com. And right on the front page, there's a place where you can uh, see all the, the different courses that I teach. Um, the How to sing your body's personal scale, how to... Do the harmonics of, of, of all of your chakras, how to write your own mantra songs. Um, all, all of these things are right on the front page. And if you can't decide which one you want to do, there's a little contact form. that says schedule a free 20 minute consult. I will talk with you for 20 minutes and we'll understand what, what you're trying to accomplish. And I'll suggest the way to go about doing it. I think this is something that everybody needs to look into. There's a certain simplicity to the complexity of what you're offering 
which is going to provide profound healing for folks at, at the heart level. You know, there's an old spiritual saying that the mind will be the last to know. And when you start doing this type of work that you are so skillfully putting out there, it just, I think it resonates with folks who are seeking something maybe uh, that isn't the norm right now. If you're musically inclined, even if you're just a shower singer, uh, if you love to sing, if you love music, then this might be a, a, a technique for you. If you're a painter, if you're very visually oriented, maybe this isn't the way to go uh, because it's going to be a little bit more work for you to do it you know, with, with sound. But there are a whole bunch of it, us on the planet that will respond so much better to sound than to visual. And those are the people that I work with to get them to understand the power of their voice, right? Once once you experience the power in your voice, your self-esteem kind of, and you start to feel a little bit better about yourself. Your self-love increases, your, self, your joy increases, your health increases, your success increases. There's this whole cascade of things that happens. When you start to use your voice consciously and you discover your superpower, it's interesting if we're having problems with our outer voice, we, the last place we look is our inner voice. Maybe that's the first place we should look. Well, it's all about listening then, isn't it, Ed? Skill, well, learning how to pay attention sometimes is challenging for folks, especially if you don't like the message. So we attack the messenger. Uh, and I think when we apply the skills that, that you're applying, it's so powerful because the humming, the, the sounds, they're not words per se, because words mean things. And then we have a kind of a, we're kind of out in front of the moment there because we think we know what that means. Mm -hmm. so you're kind of sneaking up on the subconscious, alerting oh, yeah. it. I've got my oh, yeah. eye on you. Sound, see, sound isn't processed up here in the free prefrontal cortex. It's processed way back here in reptile brain. Right. very primitive part of ourselves so uh, you can have all kinds of defenses about the, you know some topic and you're there's like no way you're going there but when you hum the right sound it like it goes in the back door right. you can't yeah. defend against it <laughs> yeah. it will do you, you can't defend against it it's just the way the body is made you know and let's talk about efficiency with the time that we do have you know a lot of the things that i teach folks is building up what we call co2 tolerance building up resiliency and and co2 gets a lot of bad print out there as it's bad for you you know we're inhaling as much oxygen as we're exhaling and when we add the carbon to the exhale that's the major physiological detoxifier of excessive inflammation acidity things that impair optimal alkalinity in our blood now when you add another layer to this which is the mental humming instruction to building up co2 tolerance you're getting more bang for your buck in everything that you're doing you're becoming more efficient with your time this is remarkable it is and yet it's so simple which is why people won't do it <laughs> couldn't right. possibly work it's too simple <laughs> oh man, I I could listen to you talk all day. Oh, Ed, thank you. How else can I support your mission to help folks help themselves? Well, I'm I'm hoping this interview will be watched far and wide, uh, and I also have a book. Yes, let's hear about that. Coming for health, sound tools for physical and emotional balance. Uh, coming for health sound for tools health. now where do we buy this it's on amazon Go Good on to hear. And, and and get that sound tools for emotional and physical balance and and what what is what's emotional balance look like mm -hmm. the ability to walk through chaos and remain calm that's right that's right it's like the dalai lama explained it once like He's at the bottom of, of the ocean. 
His emotions are at the bottom of the ocean and the waves and the storms that go on up at the mm -hmm. top of the ocean, he, you're kind of aware of them, but they don't rule you. You know, a, a lot of us empaths, you know, we will walk into a, a crazy situation and we're feeling everybody else's feelings and we don't know what's ours and what's other people's. And, and it just, it makes you crazy. But if you have strengthened your auric field, you know, with your sounds, and you've used your voice to do that, you can take your whole energy field and walk through chaos and bring calm to the area and not be, uh, you know, go crazed mm -hmm. like everyone else. So it's the ability to, to just kind of stay at that still, know where that still point is. Right. At the end of the breath, before you take the next inhale in, mm -hmm. If you're doing, if, if the breath is a infinity wave, right? right? And you're exhaling out and then you're being breathed, you know, back in, you're working with, I am the light of the breath. Uh, that's, that's powerful stuff. But that still point in between the in-breath and the out-breath, that's where the magic happens. It certainly, certainly does. And then the tones and sounds that you're making in between those still points are extremely vibrational healing. Yes, sir. Wow. That was a heck of an hour. I feel great. Well, good. I hope other people feel great when they listen to it, too. I love the hum. I don't know where it came from. I just... I like to soothe myself. It's your body self-regulating. I am responsible for my health. I am responsible for my happiness. I am responsible for my relationships. And I think the work that you're doing on some level is so powerful because we're just trusting that these sounds can rewire our subconscious. In other words, you don't have to consciously uh, interact with these sounds. You just do it. You just be it. And it'll rewire subconscious imprints that might not be uh, in vibration with our greater good. Right. Could be causing you pain and sleepless nights. Yeah, I love doing it at night, too. You know, right before I go to sleep, I really like to take care of my day. The, the first five minutes and the last five minutes, the first conscious breath and right before the first or the last unconscious breath. I just kind of just set the tone cerebrally with that tone that brings me present. And that's beautiful. That's all, that's all I can do is be present. You know, just that's all I can do. That's all that's the best do. I can do. It's just, it's not do present. It's be present. I'm a human being. Amen. Amen, sister. Man, you made my day. Thank you so much. We got to have you back on because this rabbit hole is so deep. And I want to get a little deeper into the vibrations and specific sounds if you'll come on again sometime later. I would love to. Thank you. Thanks for making my day, Kathleen. And as always, go be great. I will. And as always, stay tuned. Stay tuned. I love that. Thank <laughs> you, love. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.